1959, a Chinese novel called Return of the Condor Heroes was released, the second book in the Condor Heroes trilogy. It's been 62 years. There are now a total of 15 adaptations consisting of films, dramas, and even comics. A new adaptation is awaiting release in China, and a comic adaptation has even been repackaged as a limited collector's edition due to popular demand, 25 years after it was first released. But why does this novel continue to see adaptation after adaptation years after it first came out? On the surface, it appears to repeat a rebooting problem that's been criticized heavily after the rise of Disney live-action reboots. It reflects an industry of risk when it comes to new stories and an unwillingness to think outside the box. It reduces the opportunity for newer, less popular creators to take over the mantle, and maybe it continues to beat a dead horse for a sweet cash grab. All this holds true to a certain extent, but it is a lot more complicated for Return of the Condor Heroes. In this video, we will look at why these adaptations matter and why this novel continues to inspire adaptations again and again. The mastermind behind Return of the Condor Heroes is a man called Louis Cha. Or perhaps you know him better by his pen name, Jin Yong. Even if one may not have picked up his books, mentioning his name in front of Chinese-speaking audiences instantly conjures an image of martial artists in a gravity-defined duel amongst the trees. The place that Jin Yong's books have in Chinese literature has been compared to the likes of Western giants like Lord of the Rings. He is one of four greats in the wuxia genre, who are referred to collectively as Jing Gu Liang Wen. Wuxia, directly translated as martial hero, is a genre of Chinese popular fiction that revolves around the escapades of superhuman martial artists in ancient China. However, with decades of history behind it, Wuxia is now more than just a genre. In an interview with Xiao Chu, the scriptwriter for Word of Honor, one of China's most popular Wuxia dramas in 2021, she says that the roots of China's classical culture and romance are in Wuxia. It is a staple of Chinese popular culture. A large reason for why this is, is due to adaptations. For many Chinese-speaking fans, their first interaction with the wuxia genre is likely to be a film or TV adaptation. Jin Yong's original text has intricate language, but it may not be for everyone. Audiences could be too young to fully understand the original text, or the language itself can be too dense for all readers. Adaptations make wuxia more accessible. It opens up the original material to a wider audience. The visual interest of TV or comic adaptations makes it easier to understand and engage with. Adaptations become a gateway into the material for new fans. Some adaptations of Return of the Condor Heroes has gone on to become household classics, making wuxia even more memorable in the hearts and minds of the Chinese. It has launched the careers of many of its often new actors and creators to future acclaim. Actress Liu Yifei, who played the role of Mulan in Disney's live-action movie, rose to stardom because of her role as Dragon Girl in the 2006 adaptation. As the key creative mind behind the 1995 comic adaptation, artist Wee Tian Bing gained a massive following after its success. He became the first Singaporean artist to break into the international comics market, and even went on to sell millions of comics after setting up his own comic studio. This comic adaptation reached out to an even younger audience after its release, allowing more fans into Jin Yong's rich world of wuxia in an entirely new dimension, art. But what is being adapted when it comes to Return of the Condor Heroes isn't just the story. Why would TVB's 1995 adaptation with Carmen Lee and Louis Ku continue to remain so loved? Why would fans demand a re-release of Wee Tian Bing's comic adaptation 25 years after it was first published? You can chalk it up to nostalgia, but nostalgia depends on your memory to keep the magic working. What makes these adaptations memorable is the spirit. They didn't just get the story right, they got the spirit right, and that is what stays with you. It is the spirit that these adaptations embody that makes it so exciting. Chinese people grow up consuming this spirit. They know it very well. Capturing the wuxia and Jin Yong's spirit is more than just throwing superhuman martial heroes together into a duel and calling it a day. When done right, wuxia is empowering and inspirational. It is a genre made of chivalrous and benevolent heroes who live on the fringes of society. 
They are powerful, but only because they train hard to even get there. They right wrongs and protect the weak through their own means and power. But even then, they are not infallible. Jin Yong not only captured this for Return of the Condor Heroes, he became a blueprint for Wuxia by making these heroes real and complex, and doing the same to the world in his novels. He turns novels into an encyclopedia of Chinese history, medicine, geography, philosophy, mathematics. Nobody ever does that, says Petrus Liu, a Chinese and comparative literature professor at Boston University in an interview with NPR. This world of rich material in Return of the Condor Heroes is what continues to inspire adaptations. The novel shows an acute sensitivity to human nature and social observation. It explores issues of loyalty and distrust, the complicated nature of revenge, and the desire to live freely without worldly judgment. It represents one of Chinese popular culture's most devoted relationships. Yang Guo, the novel's main character, is a complicated hero, distrusted by his guardian Huang Rong because of his father's actions. He defies traditional expectations of the society he lives in by choosing to love Dragon Girl even though it is taboo. He is righteous and upholds his own moral code, but even this is tested when he suspects that Guo Jing might have been the reason for his father's death and wishes revenge upon a man that raised him. Yang Guo is not your typical straight-laced hero, and neither are the characters that surround him. Martial prowess is not only ascribed to male heroes either. Female heroes like Dragon Girl and Huang Rong get to be just as powerful and intelligent. Like Li Mo Chou, they can even be vengeful. And this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what Jin Yong begins to explore in his novel. We will also be explaining these issues in more detail in future videos. But the desire to adapt something as meaningful as Return of the Condor Heroes makes sense. Who wouldn't want to see such rich representation in action, be it on TV or through a comic? Being able to capture this beyond its faithfulness to the original story is what makes the adaptation work. Adaptations are necessarily a bad sign. There is a desire to escape into Wuxia when the world demands you toe the line of the morally great. There is a desire in the values that it inspires and the emotions its chivalric heroes evoke. It's why one of China's top dramas in 2021 is a Wuxia-inspired adaptation. Of course, loyal fans have reason to be worried when they see another adaptation churned out again. But it's not that we don't want to see it. With 15 adaptations and counting, we clearly do. We just want to be able to see it done right. <laughs>